Dateline, November 18th. You're listening to the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. I hear squabbling in the lawyers, background, actually. But we like to confer with clients, even though we're not real lawyers. Today's topic, sitcoms on trial. So that's our client, you mean? Yes. <laughs> Oops. See, I told you I'd screw it up. <laughs> you did it in very professionally, Greg. Until so I Matt, Matt reeled this client in, and I think it was specifically, is what shows from our childhoods wouldn't be wouldn't uh, fly today, if you will, wouldn't be kosher. I don't even know if it needs to be from our childhood. It could be from any point in time that we've watched stuff on TV. It could even be current shows, which really shouldn't be on the air if you want to do that. <laughs> even now, that's right. You know. But uh, you guys have one, like, in mind that uh, has been sitting in your head that would be, like, the, the least appropriate one for the day and age? Amos and Andy? Yeah, I'd say that one. Probably Jack Benny show. I think a combination of yeah. the two. May I throw, throw Honeymooners in there for the Me Too movement. Yes, because he would always threaten his wife with physical violence. Yes, it's true. And, and it was played off uh, for laughs. Right, and they also, and it was always him demanding like her um, acting the regular housewife role. Do you notice in that show they only had like two rooms that they would ever show, but mostly it was just one. It was just like the kitchen with the table in the room, and then a door would open to another room or to the hallway. But that was like the extent of the. S- that was like the extent of the set. I never remember seeing any other room in that show. I didn't he, see all the episodes. On I one guess. episode, he did go out of his window to hide, to catch <laughs> the wife. He thought she was cheating on him, and instead she was, you know, setting some situation up so they could have a comedy about it. For those of you out there who don't know what sitcom stands for, you're obviously a moron. But if you don't know, I'll help you be less moronic and explain that sitcom is short for situation comedy. In other words, you have a comedy that is created based upon some situation that occurs within the show, and then things get funny. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. ha. Like, for example, a situation yes. happened where Fonzie had to jump over some sharks. That was a situation. A situation? It's a situation. And then hijinks <laughs> ensued and laughter. So Maybe you should explain to people what a Fonzie is. It's not like some disease you get, like as a rash on your kneecap or something. If they don't know, they're morons. <laughs> Everyone should know Fonzie is. Okay. Google it. Well, tell them. That's you know the point here. It, would jumping over a shark not shark not be relevant today? It never was rev- relevant. But Rebel. I think there might be parents groups because that show was geared for children. A lot of kids liked Happy Days. I think a lot of parents would be like, this is a bad lesson for kids who might try to duplicate this. Helicopter parents, if you will. So so would Happy Days be a show that would be appropriate for today? Because it's Probably. based in the 50s, right? Or the early 60s? Yeah. It's more like the but 60s. They never talked about anything that controversial or anything or that would uh, make people angry or it's very lighthearted. Yeah. Oh, Fonzie was kind of just this total Lothario. A uh-huh. lot of people would be like, yeah, he's just, a, all he does is hit on, treat women like meat. Every woman was just uh, someone to fuck to him. Well, what kind of meat that it was it like beef or lamb or is it uh, more of, of, of fish? Like a cod? It depends on the woman, or, I guess. I, or a haddock, possibly. It depends on the woman. Yeah, what kind of yeah. meat should be treated? I mean, say treat a, some people treat meat really well, so I'm not sure I understand your point there about treating like a piece of meat. Well, um, yeah, you do know what I'm talking about. I don't, Greg. I want you to be more yeah, specific he, on, he on your cliche. Like, he never it. loved the girls. He just fucked girls and then moved on to the next girl. He, they weren't like, oh, I'm in love with her. Later on, I think he fell in love in the last <laughs> season. Do we know that he actually had sex with them? It was implied. It was implied. So we don't really know. It could be that he would go out with them and they would just play checkers or something. Play miniature golf. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I missed. Are we talking about Fonzie? There is a, uh, a raging debate at uh, the downstairs dining room table about something to do with Europe. I'm not really sure. 
Um, a couple of our louder girls probably would have heard them if I hadn't been on mute. Can we invite them into well, the show? I hear them and I hear the dog, and they're all kind of part of the show right now. The dog is not making any noise. That is just people. That was a the, child barking. The, the dog is locked far away on the other side of the house. If you hear the dog, you have a superpower. <laughs> I have a stupor power, yes. A stupor power. Yes. <laughs> I have the power to put people in a stupor from my inane ramblings. But, I, uh, yeah, Greg brought up Fonzie from Happy Days to talk about how Fonzie is treating women like pieces of lamb or attic or some other type of meat. I, I think Fonzie's pretty benign as far as that goes. But don't you think people today would be like, ah, he, you know, he does, never has a close relationship with women. He just basically is a man slut, a man whore. Yeah, but is that any worse than the show, what was it, uh, Two and a Half Men, the one with Charlie Sheen and um, Right. That was, way, that was way worse. Yeah, that's like the ultimate in misogyny compared to Fonzie, who had like this special power we could turn on a jukebox by snapping his fingers or something. He was kind of like a wizard. <laughs> it really sounds like Brendan is having a major party. Hey, guys, yeah. I'm going to put a pin in this for a second. Brendan, can you stay up late tonight? Do you want to wait another half hour? Do, or they'll still be there. They were supposed you to stay up late. I can stay up late. They were supposed to be gone like um, 45 minutes ago. <laughs> so if you guys want to like pause it for another 15, if that's, I mean, I stay up late anyway, and it's like not even nighttime for you guys. So yeah, I wouldn't mind. Well, maybe it'd be worth checking to see when they might be. I mean, if you, if Holly might have a clue and when she thinks they'll be gone. Well, they can't be here too much longer. I mean, it's eight quarter after eight right now you never know with 12 year olds they have to be going out and they could have online school tomorrow this is florida they have school school oh school school so florida has like fourth in the nation of cases right now and the mm -hmm. kids are going to school absolutely they have germ school <laughs> this is covid school kids they're learning all about biology. Nah, let's just work through it. I mean, if anybody really cares about the uh, the yelling in the background, I you know what? If if there are any listeners and you got an issue with this, communicate something so I know you're there. Otherwise, I'm not going to care that we have external noise. Last two episodes, I stopped editing the sound out of it, and I don't care anymore. So uh, <laughs> until that's, until that's I know liberating. somebody's actually listening, I will. Um, I mean, in terms of who will actually engage with us in some way and respond either by email or by tw sending something on Twitter or by um, leaving a message on our website. By the way, everybody, it is uh, qsblaw.org. If you want to go to our website, you can leave a voice message there. Uh, if you have a microphone on your laptop, if you have a laptop or on your phone, whatever you want to do, give us a voice message. Prove that you exist. Let us know that in some way. Otherwise, I'll let all sorts of errors and external noises pop up on this. I'll let Greg um, do all of his normal noises, gulping from his drinks and burping. <laughs> Unless somebody finally engages with the podcast and lets them know you exist. So if you, if you like that, well, then I guess it will stay in. Anyway, so let's get back to Fonzie having sex with uh, pieces of fish and lamb and... Uh, occasional ground beef and um, whatever else you're talking about. that's the you want to use, fine. But I think some people would say he's not a good role model for kids. Because he was a motorcyclist? He was a Lothario. Yeah, but how much of a Lothario, really? He was. You know he was fucking those girls. They just couldn't show it on network TV. The censors weren't allowed, but it was implied. Right, but so... So this being the case compared to like the, the example I mentioned before, uh, Two and a Half Men, it's very, very tame. But is that show geared to like 10-year-olds? Like Happy Days' main demographic, I think, was kids. Kids love that show. There was a cartoon on Saturday mornings about Fonzie even. They knew that kids liked Fonzie. I don't think it was, it was geared toward kids because most of the shows back then were geared towards everybody. Yeah, but that show really took on with kids. Like kids loved Fonzie. I mean, it was just like... 
he took over the show. When you say kids and, love Fonzie, are you saying that you loved Fonzie? Is that really what we're talking about here? I thought he was cool as hell. I thought so he you're was speaking for all people who watched the show and Every saying that it was geared for kids because it was all about you. We thought he was awesome. We thought he was the best man who ever lived, and we wanted to grow up to be him. But for what I'm it's worth, it, for what it's worth, I hated the show. I hate everything about the fifties. I don't know what it is about the fifties for me. <laughs> I don't like the whole grooving all we with you and bebop and little poodle skirts. Some people get totally into it, like a religion. Elvis, that time of music, just makes my skin crawl. So I was never a happy days person. I was more a Sanford and Son. I wasn't smart enough to get Sanford and Son. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but now I do. What was there to get in Sanford and Son? I don't know. It was just it it's was a guy with a son and a dead wife that he would occasionally call out to because he thought he was having a heart attack. Right. Yeah. It was just something weird about seeing some old cranky old man like talk to berate his son all the time. Like that as a little boy, I thought that was weird. I was just like, this isn't funny. I don't like it. No, would that would that be a politically incorrect show to have on now? Uh, oh. I th- I think so. I mean, there was a oh. lot of the Jeffersons, Sanford and Son, all in the Good family. Times, All in the Family. I was just thinking of the ones that really kind of catered to the uh, the black community. Uh, there were some. I don't know. I don't know that people would appreciate those shows now, or maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe it would be this empowerment thing, and Good Times is coming back. You know. I know that I watched all those shows when I was growing up because a lot of the cases there wasn't a lot of other options to watch, but I thought they were funny. You know, I remember, uh, oh, what's his name? Jimmy from uh, Good Times who would do the saying dynamite. And that's where Janet Jackson got her start was on that TV show, mm-hmm. you know, as a youth. I never uh, thought that Happy Days was funny, though, just by the way. I never laughed at it. It was just I'd watch it like a soap opera almost like, oh, it's going to happen to Richie this week. What's Fonzie yeah. going to do? Well, the the laugh track helped, didn't it? Didn't it tell it you when you were supposed to laugh? Yeah, but I didn't feel like laughing. I said, oh, why are they laughing? That wasn't very funny. That's not funny. I think it this got really important. bad is when they actually brought Mork from Ork onto the show. That was Where great. it suddenly went out of the realm of an actual home in middle America to a home visited by aliens in middle America, which kind of took it even further out of the realm of reality, let alone, you know, a positive role model household that doesn't really exist anywhere. Because everybody and then they had broken. The show, Mork and Mindy, had an interspecies romance. That's not cool. That's against the laws of God. An alien having sex with a earth woman? Well, I, did that happen? Oh, that's right. That's they had a kid, didn't they? Didn't they yeah, have a kid? The, the kid was Jonathan Winters, right? Yeah, and he aged backwards. Yes. Yeah. Well, if anybody was, was going to be though. a good foil for Robin Williams on a show, it would be Jonathan Winters. So yeah. Jonathan Winters. Robin Williams may have been nuts, but Jonathan Winters was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that shit. <laughs> but, you know, incredibly hilarious almost every time he talked. So I guess that, that works in your favor sometimes. But I think that, uh, you know, we brought up All in the Family, and All in the Family wouldn't necessarily fly now in terms of some of the the content, but it was a groundbreaking show because it was dealing yeah. with these racial issues that were going on in the late 60s and early 70s um, in a kind of a real way where, you know, I think, what was it? Archie Bunker was like a forklift operator or something. Wasn't yeah, that something his job? Like that. It was some blue collar, I don't recall, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, I, and then his wife was constantly abused by him as was. Yes his daughter and his son-in-law son-in-law for those who don't know from the show is Rob Reiner who went on to have one of the best directing careers of any director out there but um but I'll always be meathead to me I'll be meathead to you but what about um let's say a show like uh, Welcome Back Cotter oh I don't hmm. know if you remember that one That's oh I, I loved that show so that one that one appealed to you more than Happy Days, obviously, because it didn't have to do with the fifties. Yeah, because it was a little grittier. You know, you're dealing with uh, lower lower it class was... kids, I suppose, who were going to a school where it was somewhere in New York City, I think, was it? Yeah, it was mm-hmm. something that I could relate to. I couldn't relate to the nuclear family and mom and dad and happy Richie and all that shit. I just wanted to punch everybody in the face. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a different show. 
I want to build a time machine <laughs> for your birthday. I'm going to send you back to the fifties just so you can punch everyone in the face. Oh, I would have a great I would, birthday. I would, I would get up early and I would go long. Yeah. But the cops weren't as nice then <laughs> as they are now. No. Oh, they're no, really no. nice now too. <laughs> they would have, uh, they would have had a different point of view of how to deal with a young buck like yourself. Yeah, I'll take my 50s. chances with a 50s cop. <laughs> <laughs> He's too. not outfitted with tanks. Kevlar and, you know, and a body <laughs> armor and a, a machine gun. Yeah, they just uh, would get all their buddies together to get you after hours, that's all. Take out you, take out your family, take out your blog. Take over the county line. Yes, exactly. Where you'll but, never be but, seen again. But, but I was, but I'm Irish, so that might be an advantage to me because most oh, of yeah, them are that, Irish. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's, I, only the Irish were hired to work as police officers in the fifties. I don't think right. they allowed anybody of any other nationality. No, no. no. I said just no. So no, you're you're Polish. Forget it. I don't know. You're just gonna have to go make sausages. There's no Walenza. Officer Walenza is not happening. But <laughs> Officer McDool, yes. <laughs> Is, is it Mick or O? Which which is more associated with the Irish? Isn't it? Uh, aren't the Mick's more? I guess the, yeah, Mick was the pejorative for Irish people, right? So it I guess it'd be like the O'Connors would be more Scottish than Irish, or is it just no, a combination O's, of both? It's the opposite. The O's are more commonly associated with Irish. Mick's can be both Scottish and Irish. Oh, but the pejorative is strictly for Irish, Irish for whatever people. reason. Would you guys That's stop saying the M word, please? Monster. You you just said it. Mulanyan. I'm not going to repeat it. Monkey boy. Mula. <laughs> Mulan Rouge. Mulan Rouge. <laughs> I will stop saying that M word. Yes. I will no I'm longer kidding. say marmalade. Lady marmalade, please don't. <laughs> I said I wouldn't Unless say you it. Sing it. You can sing it if you want, Greg. Go ahead. I think you should <laughs> take the first take that. the first verse. Brendan will take the second. Hey sister, go, sister, go, sister, go, sister, go, sister, hey sister, go, sister. I'm there it is. Song. I'm glad you remembered it, Bert, Greg, because I couldn't remember how it began. So I'm glad yeah. you took that part. Anyway, so so welcome back, Carter. It was a great show. Um, it had yeah. sweat hogs. They had the sweat hogs, kind of a gang, I guess. Of yeah, well, sorts. well, it was the just the students in the class were called sweat hogs, and you know, well, it actually makes you wonder where did that name come from. Did they ever talk about that in the show? Like where I they got the name? There names. was a legacy. Uh, Cotter was a sweat hog when he was a student, and Mr. Woodman was his teacher. It was a tradition in that school that the losers were called the sweat hogs, the kids that were just fuck huh. them, they're lost cases. Yeah, but where did the name itself originate oh, from? I think they made it up. Yeah, I don't. Think yeah, but isn't it, it's kind of an odd. Well, obviously it's made up for the show. Yeah. But, you know, if you're going to go into like a history of something, how do you think that could have originated? The term sweat hog, like a hog that's sweaty. And that it's attributed to these filthy. kids. They're, they're dirty, dirty, dirty poor little kids. Poor they're kids. dirty, but they're sweaty. So yeah. they're sweaty and yeah. dirty. And but then it's a, this term of pride that they have is that they are sweat hogs. Yeah, they're the yeah, lovable that's, losers. That's how but, they usually do. They take the pejorative word, the sweaty pigs, and, or like the N word, and then they make it a self affirmation of yeah. We're I don't that. think I ever did that with the N word on a sitcom, and it's probably for the best that they. Uh, Chappelle did. show. Is that was that yeah, a, kidding, really? That's I'm more kidding. of a variety show than a sitcom. It's true, but I'm just saying. They you hit know, sketches. He, he, dro- he dropped that every day. Yeah. Did, did Archie Bunker ever say it? Ever say that word, or you always said like spear chuckers or other bad words? Jungle. Party. He never used the N word. I don't, I don't think. think he ever used the N word. You guys are wonderful in pulling out those to educate our youth. Anyway, well, that's a colorful term. Here, let's give you another one. <laughs> Tell them the one about sitting on porches too. That'd be fun. Anyway, yeah, I from the seventies. Was, I got was lots, blue gums of... one? Was that one, Greg? Blue gums. Blue gums. <laughs> Maybe that was. Just... That Maybe one. that was just my neighborhood. <laughs> blue comes. It's blue hair. No, oh, no, that's the old ladies. Yeah, well, you know, they're just, they're pretty bad. Old ladies. You can't yeah. really trust them. If you ever watch any Monty Python episodes, you can tell. The old ladies could come after you at any point. Yeah, I'd like to come back to Amos and Andy, if uh, that's all right. Would and you? Then. Would you like to go back to Amos and Andy, Greg? I was just because, first of all, if you guys have ever seen Amos and Andy, it's fucking hilarious. The Kingfish is one of the funniest characters ever. But I get 
why that show that show was canceled back in the 60s and 70s the repeats even before there's a thing about getting rid of shows because they were culturally insensitive but that show really irked people but i remember seeing this documentary in the 80s a lot of prominent black activists were saying the amazing thing about amos and andy if you watch the show is everyone on it was black because they wanted it segregated. They didn't want some white people popping up. So the judge was black when they had to see a judge. All the cops are black. When they go to see a lawyer, they're black. There was no black judges in New York City. I'm pretty sure in the 50s. So did these black activists and I'm sorry, not activists, but you know, scholars were saying it was really important for black people to see themselves on TV for once or in film. We're not, they're not just the maid. They're everything. Hey, I could be a judge when I grow up because it's on the innocent Andy. Look, there's a black judge. There's black cops. Chief of police is black. So even though it does have those stereotype um, minstrel type roles, they did say it was very powerful for young black people to see that show because they were invisible on TV. There, there's no black people on TV unless they were domestics. Well, it's understandable. I was just watching a documentary on Jesse Owens earlier today who was uh, the multiple gold winner winner Weta Weta? The multiple gold medal winner. Weta Weta Gold medal winner. Weta Weta In Nazi Germany as an African American. And uh, there was, they interviewed some people who were also gold or medal winners in the Olympics who looked to him as their role model. Like he and Joe Lewis were like the only ones in popular culture, at least as athletes that they could look up to. Because at the time, there were no black people in baseball or in football. Now look uh, at it. Yeah. <laughs> no, now they now they win. They've taken everything over except for hockey. And good for them. I really wish they'd take over hockey too. I would love to see that. They even they took were, over golf. Golf and tennis too. Back when Arthur yeah. with, with uh, Venus and Serena, but Arthur Ashe should come in and, and tennis would mm-hmm. away. But it's not really but, taking over. It's just they've they were given more opportunities to be able to shine where they didn't necessarily have that opportunity before. You know, I think that's why there's more Hispanic people uh, boxing these days because there's more of them in um, harsher, harder situations coming into our country um, and trying to make something of their uh, their lives. There was used to be more of an African American sport, you know, because of the fact that their um, communities tend to be lower income, you know, and they had to find ways to get out of there. But anyway. Um, I was making a point regarding Jesse Owens and the, oh yeah, you bring up Amos and Andy. So yeah, it, it, I think back in that period of time, there was a lot of people who would like to see more of themselves in better roles. Even women would have liked to see themselves in like executive roles, you know, to use that as a way to bolster themselves up so they don't have to feel like they could just be housewives. You know? Yeah. The irony though is that the racist racism of the time was what dictated this fantasy they were showing because they, they could have had a white judge, but they were that's how racist people were like, it's a black show. We don't want them intermingling with white people. People would get really pissed at that. As long as they're off in their own little city that where no one's white, we can deal with it. But it did give a positive message to lots of the only message on TV. But if it was airing now, you're saying it would be looked upon as a minstrel show? Well, there was. Even there's other things. It's not like Jesse Owens, who's just an inspirational story. There yeah. was the you know, the over the top, like the accents, you know, which doesn't play well now. Just like the Italian guy. If it I can do play well now. the accent, I'm Italian. <laughs> Greg doesn't like, play well now either. If there was an Italian character now in a sitcom, it was like, hey, I'm Mr. Bracci, I'm making you a spicy meatball. People would get annoyed. They'd be like, that's kind of a. I don't know if they would get that annoyed because they've been shutting down Italian stuff left and right um, culturally. You know, they're taking away Columbus Day. And, you know, I know Italians well, aren't that's... happy about that. Well, he was a mass murderer. I, I agree. And as an Italian, I don't mind. Because there's no Columbus Day. So Not should really we change the name of everything that has the name Columbus in it? Like District of Columbia? Should that be changed to something else? The Columbia River? Why should we not? change that too? What should you change it to? MLK River? The, the Greg Pettix River. Uh, do you think anything would be named after you, Greg? <laughs> no. Other than the cup in your hand? <laughs> This, I call this a pedix. It's like the, so, any, anything you'd be named after somebody, you should name all of your, your utensils after so you. So I, I think that uh, that's what Greg is saying isn't totally true. I still think they lampoon the hell out of white stereotypes or whitish ethnic stereotypes. Italians, 
Irish people. I, I don't think that's, you know, they haven't gotten rid of the fighting Irish, that little drunk leprechaun motherfucker. Lucky Charms is still running around. If that was a black guy, would, would we be eating that cereal? No. So I don't know. I don't oh, think. It depends on how good the cereal is. What would the marshmallows be? That's what I want to know. Uh, they would probably be chocolate chips. Chocolate chips. Be careful. <laughs> Watch where you're going here, Matt. Uh, <laughs> I didn't go anywhere. He was just sitting. <laughs> Well, it's interesting in the shows that we were talking about, like the Jeffersons and, you know, Good Times, those, how dumb the white people were in those shows. How absolutely just stereotypically stupid yeah. white people they were. I think that's in pretty much every sitcom that has white people. They're all pretty damn stupid, which is where these sitcoms, which is why sitcoms are on trial today. You know, it's because. Because, because everybody's pretty much in most of these shows where there are entirely white people like three's company was uh, a show that certainly had its share of idiots that were the main characters oh, you know. that show was terrible <laughs> right. you know, however you could look at that as a groundbreaking show for for gay people at the time it wasn't like the lead character was gay but he was pretending to be gay so he could live with the two women and get a better rent on his uh, apartment bosom buddies would right. Bosom Buddies be allowed today because those two guys were playing, pretending to be gay? So are they pretending for, to be gay or are they pretending to be women? Women. No, they, they, were, they were trans. That's right. They were pretending to be women. Yeah, but they weren't trans. They weren't pretending to be, they weren't saying they were trans. I'm though. just saying, if that show was on television today, do you think it'd be a problem? I don't know. I mean, uh, I had a problem when it came on because I just thought it was one of the stupidest shows that was there. Um, the fact that nobody could tell that they weren't women was me going, what's wrong with you people? I don't know. Tom, Tom Hanks is kind of sexy. As a man. As a girl. <laughs> As a girl. Yeah, Peter Scolari looked good. I'm surprised woman. you still remember that actor's name. I I'm a, think I, do, only... I watched her. I watched it for Donna Dixon. I, that was she was the hottest woman on TV. I thought as a kid, I was like so in love with her. It's interesting how many people who came from sitcoms wound up being incredibly famous, and then there are others who just disappeared yeah. completely. Where you thought they would become famous. In other words, their show was really popular, and yeah. it seemed like they should have like some big movie career, and it didn't happen. But then other people did wind up having these big careers and you go why'd that guy get it and not this guy over here like the guy in uh, welcome back cotter you know gabe kaplan whatever happened to him you know he did that show it was a really popular show john travolta came out of it the star but yeah. he was the only one of the sweat hogs who did and uh they gave gabe kaplan a movie he had a movie and it failed miserably right. i don't know what but what i'm saying is that his career didn't go yeah, yeah. the way you thought it would go no. He wasn't that good. He wasn't that talented. He was a hack. Because so many <laughs> sitcoms are insipid. I'm sorry. He was never funny. He was a. He was even as a kid. He was, a, was like he was a straight man to the kids. And and John much. Travolta, John Travolta lucked out and got Saturday Night uh, Fever because he was basically yeah. being the character from the show almost. Well, I thought he got Saturday Night Fever after doing Carrie though. Did he do yeah, Carrie, Carrie first? first? Yeah. Okay. I think, I think he did Carrie before he was but in Carrie Welcome Back Cotter. didn't make him a superstar, though. Carrie, no. he was no. just like, hey, he did pretty no, good. It definitely made... to make him a superstar. Yeah. It made him known to people. And then The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, you know, the TV movie that he did. Oh, I think that was, that was before was, I think that was before it was also. So I think those things were, like, building his career. So then he did Saturday Night Fever. But I had an issue with Tra Travolta for probably 20 years where I just couldn't see him other than as... Vinny Barbarino from <laughs> Back Connor. And like, I could never see him in any other... I was like, he's always playing this character no matter where he, what he was doing. I think it wasn't until Pulp Fiction I was finally able to like separate him from that yeah. role. You know, where it's like, okay, I, I can see say, he can Saturday act Night now. Fever, Saturday Night Fever, yeah, I, I don't know if you've seen it in the past 30 years. He really is like, deserved to be a star. Like, he is so good at dancing, the charisma he exudes. He's, he's a star in that movie. He's really... Pretty impressive. Well, I, I, I even if, it, if, if you don't, even if you don't like the guy, and even if you don't like a lot of his movies, the fact that he's had still a career with so many movies that have tanked, you know, because yeah. he's had done lots of crappy movies. The fact that people still know who he is is really, really a testament to the guy's talent. You know that he's been right. able to last this long. You know. Um, and I think Tom Selleck would be like a similar one. Like you'd go, how did he wind up getting a big career coming out of Magnum PI? 
but he didn't become a huge movie star, but he did get leading roles in some movies that were okay. You know, really? but he didn't disappear. I don't remember one. <laughs> it seemed like he bombed every movie bomb that he was in. But oh, he was, oh, no, he was in Three Men and a Baby, and he those were oh, popular that was a, movies. Oh, a classic piece of cinema. Three, people, three Men and a Baby. Well, they I'm just saying well, it was though. a really was popular a movie. movie. Is what I'm saying. It didn't bomb. I'm not that saying the, it, one where the baby talks. And Chris no, Kelly was in it. No, that was no. the John Travolta one. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. <laughs> that was that was look who's talking. talking. Right, and then look it's sequels. Yeah, that wasn't bad, but then the sequels were like horrible. It's oh. horrible. Horrible. But, but Baby but, Geniuses is the one that's the worst. Did you ever see Baby Geniuses? That is a repulsive film. <laughs> CGI babies. <laughs> CGI babies doing things that they shouldn't be doing and dancing. Like and, uh, mathematics. Yeah. Right. Yeah, babies, babies shouldn't be doing mathematics. But I don't want them but, doing de- funky dances. But like, what other? I mean, if you can remember going back, like, what other characters that came out of sitcoms became hugely popular? Uh, uh, what's his name? Fox. Uh, Jamie Fox. Not Jamie Fox, although him too. But uh, Michael J. Fox. Oh yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, he did. He, unfortunately, he had a disease that killed his career. That's which is sad. Well, but what I'm saying, you he know. was in Family Ties. Right. Right. And then he bounced out of that and did a bunch of stuff before. Yeah, oh, I imagine before. if they'd made Family Ties now with him being the conservative. Like, how pro-Trump do you think he would be? Ooh, <laughs> oh, interesting. You know, it's like, would he have really like destroyed his family in that case? Be a full yeah, manga. You, you, you know what's interesting? I think we need a show like that. You know? Oh, I'm maybe, sure we're gonna get one. Maybe with you know <laughs> conservative parents and a liberal kid, or, or vice versa. Probably more interesting to have liberal parents like that one and a conservative kid, and have them you know a very special episode, the election. <laughs> a very special <laughs> episode for very special people. <laughs> Don't you remember those? A very special episode. Oh yes. <laughs> For the after school specials? No, it would be like, you know, to do the different strokes thing, but then they'd have the, the guy that was that wanted to take pictures of the little boys in the back. And they would they would start it off by going, Tonight's a very special episode. And you I'd always be like, Oh good, we're gonna get something nasty. Yeah. Something juicy. <laughs> Something's going on. There's somebody's gonna drug out something or... controversial is gonna go on on this show. Right, because yeah. different strokes was a was definitely a sitcom. And oh, then yeah. they brought in that really heavy episode dealing with the kid toucher. Ooh, you know? yeah. It's I, like, I, how, I, do you, how do you handle those things delicately, you know? Yeah. But, you know, a lot, it, it's interesting how the media has, or at least the writers for these shows, have found ways to put certain topics into society to get people talking about it. Um, and it, was it deliberate for a purpose to change society in some way? Like, have we all been manipulated by sitcoms in some way to uh, change our points of view about things? Or um, is it done in outside of the entertainment realm, strictly through the news? I think more people trust the sitcoms to give you something lighthearted, but then you makes you makes concepts a little more palatable than if it's the news where everything's just so serious and you, you try to reject that information. If I was remember, listening to an int- oh, continue, I was going to say when you if you remember back when we were kids, the news was on between six and seven, and that was fucking it. So you know, in terms of bombarding your mind with thoughts and ideas and viewpoints and you know storylines and controversies, it was sitcoms and other TV shows, not the news. Where mm-hmm. now it's twenty four seven. Well, we watched the news every night at my house. Like oh, every yeah. night, we watched Cronkite at dinner. Yep. You know, and that was yeah. that's who we, we didn't watch anybody else. We only watched Cronkite, and I think well, we my might... dad was a liberal, so we watched McNeil Lair Report. Okay, so ah. on PBS. Yeah, he, he's a flaming liberal, so that's what we watched. See, so, yeah, but why couldn't you watch the regular news if you were a liberal? Well, McNeil La- Lair was the one that like East Coast liberals would watch. It was more. Um, well, it was beholden to advertisers, and I don't know, it just seemed more liberal. PBS is considered liberal, you know, all through my childhood. Everyone was like, oh, they're liberal. Yeah. That seemed like the more liberal news. I just thought it was better done. It just seemed better, more in-depth. Yeah, well, it would be more in-depth. But I didn't know the Mignola era was actually a news program. In other words, that they just presented news, or I thought it was more of a talking head type program. No, no, it was a new show. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah. Never watched it. So I wouldn't know. The only thing I watched PBS for was for Monty Python and Benny Hill, I think. That was maybe I, Claudius. I think those are the ones. 
What about I, Benny Hill? How would Benny Hill fare today? Oh, again, God. not not a sitcom though. <laughs> You know? Well, whatever. Do we have to I mean, we we brought well because the episode is sitcoms on trial. So yeah, we kind of are just dealing with sitcoms, Greg. Okay. And so I mean, you can okay. certainly veer off into any other territory you want, but I'm just saying. You know, okay. Do we, do we even, Matt? You have actual real television, right? I. What do you mean real television? Like you don't like. <laughs> no, no. I my on, my television's only in a candy box. <laughs> I live on. <laughs> I live on Netflix and. Amazon Prime. I don't get cable TV. I don't. I don't have a basic cable package. Uh, I have no idea what's on NBC's Power Hour on Thursday nights right now. I what? don't watch network TV per se in terms of mm-hmm. like things live. I could if I wanted to. Um, as a matter of fact, you could if you wanted to. If you do, you have you have Wi Fi, right? You, you could. I, you could. I'm, I'm on Wi Fi right now. Right. Ah. So you could stream uh, any of that stuff. Um, there's a free. If I wanted to pay for it. Well, no, you could buy like a Roku box, right? And those mm. run off of Wi-Fi, and the channels are free mostly on Roku. And you could get local news channels. You could get um, there's a, a thing called Pluto TV, which has free television, live television. As a matter of fact, Roku has like free shows that you can watch too. They come with ads, so you could watch all that stuff, and it wouldn't cost you anything except for the cost of like the Roku device. We're it's not really- getting a penny from Roku, so stop talking about Roku. And I, I, you gotta understand, I love Roku. You're advertising I will give, them. I will give them tons of free advertising. I've used them for like ten years. It's like my You're favorite. It. it was the way I was able to finally watch uh, Netflix on my TV was through using the Roku box. So it's like it's fantastic. Right. Yeah. This this portion of the show is brought to you by Roku. Roku. <laughs> Matt loves even, it. Even though they're not paying us. So my question wasn't about a lo- Roku commercial and uh-huh. how I could watch TV because I wouldn't. Yeah. Even if it was they paid me to do it. Well, there's what tons of other things you could watch using it. Okay. That's my point. Right. Yeah. I, I got it. Yeah. You'll you'll get your nickel in the mail from Roku. It's free. It's, it's free. So the question is, what are the sitcoms on TV now? What, what are people watching situation comedies now? Like, I checked out in the 90s when it was like Seinfeld, um, things like that. Well, it, the, the you, Office was huge, like, about 10 years ago. It's 10, 15 a, a years sitcom. ago, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it was around 15 years ago, but, like, within the last 10, The Office was, like, this major world event as a sitcom. You know, and right. it, it made... So here- mockumentary style television popular because then after that you had parks and recreation which is also an incredibly popular show too and those had a lot of funny situations that happened with them and actually some pretty funny people on it on those shows too but in terms of basic sitcoms sitcoms i think how i met your mother i think i've heard of that one yeah Yeah, that one one. and that was the one that kind of further catapulted doogie hauser into our our lives even more because he was like the big character. Come on, what's that guy's name? The guy. What's the actor's name who plays Doogie Howser? Uh, Neil Patrick Harris. That guy. Yeah, Neil Patrick Harris. So, so he cemented his star through that show, uh, even uh, more so. So he's had like a couple of minor movie roles, but he's become really big on Broadway, um, as of well. Course. Yeah, of course, because that's what happens when you do How I Met Your Mother. Um, what are the I other Starship Troopers? Um, there's the show Modern Family is the uh, I think the that's big one, one. The big one now. Well, you're forgetting long. the biggest one. Big Bang Theory isn't that like the biggest show the past ten years? I don't know, Greg, because I've seen Huge. basically one episode from all three of the ones that I've mentioned. <laughs> yeah, they're not. <laughs> Modern Family is kind of fun, but. Uh, I've seen, very, I've seen I try to watch. Wasn't I've very seen good. an episode of of uh, I've seen a couple episodes of Big Bang Theory. I've seen at least one of How I Met Your Mother. They were bad. Yeah, I mean they're sitcoms, you know. So it's like I have a thing about sitcoms. I have an issue with them because essentially uh, that's why I say even Big Bang Theory they're still idiots too. But in terms of like social interaction idiots, that's where most of these people are idiots. Is like they never understand that if they ask a couple of questions, they'll resolve that situation and the episode would be ended in like two minutes. You know, but because of the constant misunderstandings that would go on based upon the original not asking of the question, you're able to get a 30 minute episode out of it because somebody didn't go, so wait a second, are you saying that you didn't actually do that thing? And they go, oh yeah, I didn't do that. And they go, okay, be done. 
you know. So yeah, that's the issue that I have with sitcoms is most can be yeah, handled. It's always been basic what about communication. Mr. Furley? What about Mr. Furley on Three's Company where he can never figure out that it was, that was the window? It was the Ropers. No, but then when Mr. Furley came on, he was always like in the apartment and in the next room, Chrissy and Jack would be like trying to put something into the socket. Ram it in, Jack. I'm trying. Do it harder. And he'd be on the other side of the door be like, whoa, what am I hearing? That was Some Don Knotts' cool. character, right? Yeah, but it happened every episode. It was ridiculous. It was just like well, you know, that brings me back so to listen. It doesn't bring me back, but it reminds me of like the Andy Griffith show. So that was like small town um, police officer raised a single parent, right? Which is kind of a novelty for the time. Yeah, you know, he's raising a son by himself with his aunt B, and uh, he often uh, people just come and come in and out of the jail, you know. There, but there's never any black people in that town. No, and if they were, real life Andy Griffith probably would have beat the shit out of him a lot. Because he was don't, a Southern sheriff back in 19. I don't know that you can say that about all Southern people, Greg. It's not true right. that I they're can't. all like that. I can't say 99.9%. You're, I can't such, say you're such a carpetbagger. <laughs> I there, am. There, there are definitely Southern towns with no black people in them. Yes, that's yeah. true. So it's not they that killed them all. No, they just got enough money to get the hell out of there. No, they yeah. lynched them all is what they did. All okay, right. Matt, that brings up a point, though. Otis the Drunk, I think, would be very problematic now. Like, making fun of a, an addiction, you know, an alcoholic, that, that probably wouldn't fly. Yeah. Like, oh, Otis the Drunk, the lovable drunk. Yeah, because they never really took full advantage of it, like him puking on people's shoes and stuff, which they oh, could no. have. He was a lovable drunk. Never did anything unseemly. He was just like inebriated all the time. Well, I think he messed some things up because he was drunk. Yeah, know. he messed things up, but never horribly. Like, he never ran over a child in his car. But, his, but they would be the driving. perfect police people to be looked upon um, favorably these days because Barney always wanted to shoot things, but he couldn't figure out how to use his gun. And uh, generally, the sheriff wouldn't allow him to have any bullets. A very so, special smart. episode. Otis the Drunk <laughs> runs over a child tonight <laughs> on the Andy Griffith Show. And Barney Fife accidentally shoots. Oh, speaking of the, the breakout name from that show, it was Ron Howard was the big name out of that show. That's true. And let me show you how old I am. I remember Ronnie Howard from before he was even in Andy Griffith Show. He was on Dennis the Menace as a real little kid. I don't know if you remember the show Dennis the Menace at all. No. Yeah, but uh, and I used to watch a lot of syndicated shows growing up in my when I would like hang out at my grandparents, and uh, there would be like nothing to watch on TV except for the stuff on the UHF channel, not the VHF channel, the UHF channel. You'd have to go through like 50 channels to finally get one that wasn't static, mm. you know, and then you'd finally find something you could watch for a while. My grandfather actually one of the early remote controls too. Uh, it was a box that he had like he he was an early remote control. Your grandfather? He could be if I asked him to change the channel, but he never did. But he had a box. And he had one of the early remote controls. Oh, okay. Which had about um, fifteen buttons on it, and it was connected to the TV or to a box connected to the TV by a cable. And mm. so you would push the button on the box to change the channel on the TV. It was a fascinating thing, and it's a good thing I didn't visit too often because mm -hmm. I was always punching the buttons just to punch the buttons. Because there's something about punching buttons when you're a kid that you just oh, yeah. kind of enjoy doing for whatever reason. Is you know, this going to say clicking into another Roku pitch? Somehow? No, I, I had forgotten about it. But thanks for bringing up the Roku, Greg. Let me there's got to be a better that, Greg, way, Greg Brendan. Roku. A better way than the Roku? Well, no, they've better tried. Better than your grandfather's thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Roku, the Roku, it. you can actually use your own phone to uh, control it. So you can put the remote. Con there's an app for wonderful. your phone. I love this can... Roku. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> I'm sold. You sold me that. <laughs> you can control it with your phone. You can, get those, at, you can get those at Best Buy and Circuit City. Am I right? Or possibly on Amazon.com? Yeah. Does Circuit City still exist? Uh, there was one up the road from me. <laughs> Six months ago, could be oh, gone really? Oh, really? Okay, because we used to have one out here, but it disappeared years ago. So I have a, um, like I have Radio a Shack friend. is gone too. I, I, have a I, good know, I know where there's a Radio Shack. 
Oh, they're all gone from here. What's that, Greg? I have a good friend who's my age, and when she was a little girl, her parents didn't have a remote. Yes. She was their remote. Yes. She would be studying upstairs, and they would just be like, oh, ma. And she'd have to run downstairs and turn their channel. Instead of wait, 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 wait a second. Sofa. What was that you just said? Uma. Oma. Her name's Uma. Oh, I thought you were saying, oh, like, oh, mother, oh, ma. No, they would seriously, they were so lazy. They would get, like, they just treat their daughter like this. Uh, I want you, I want to hear you call her name again. Uma. <laughs> Uma. They had heavy accents. Uma. They're, they're from South India. Uma. It wasn't Uma against, Thurman? Uma. Like, Uma would have to run downstairs and change their channel. And she was studying. She wasn't like dicking around. They, instead of them getting off the sofa and changing the channel, they'd make her interrupt anytime they wanted the channel changed. Isn't that insane? I like, think we all Uma. watch TV too close to the TV so that we wouldn't have to travel too far to change the channel. They should have. No, they probably still would have called their. No, I'm saying as kids, didn't you do that? Didn't you sit close to the TV mm. generally? I had a big living room. I didn't have to. I didn't really. Well, it's not back. a matter of having to. It's just like if you had a big living room, that means you were farther away from the TV and you would have to travel farther to change the channel. You would know? you lay down in front of the TV like those kids in the old pictures, like laying down with your face right up to it? I wasn't like right up to it, but, you know, like within a couple of arms lengths. Yeah. I know. We had a weird TV. Thinking back on it, we didn't get we didn't get color TV till the early '80s. My dad was just what unwilling. He was unwilling to upgrade the television until wow. I think 2001 came on as a, a movie of the week type of thing, and then he finally decided to buy a color TV. And then we watched it in color. He's like, "This is how this should be watched." I'm like, "Yeah, couldn't we have done this years ago?" He didn't appreciate that response though. <laughs> He didn't appreciate a lot of my responses, to be honest. I bet he didn't. <laughs> but we had this black and white TV for so, I mean, that I grew up with uh, until I was in my early teens um, when we got the color TV. And it had this button he had to push to turn it on, but it was like this strange rectangular thing that if you hit it wrong, you couldn't actually turn it on. You had to be like right on the center of it to get the turn on. And, uh, you know, it was like the hand cranking of the channels, too, that you had to do. And it's just you, that's why you just often just watch crappy shows because you just didn't feel like going through finding something else, you know. Or you look at the TV guide and there really give, wasn't anything else. I have to give one more story because I don't think this will ever sync up with what we're talking Uma! about. When I, little, when I was a little boy, I had, those, I had one of those Fisher Price uh, farmhouses, you know, with the little Fisher Price people, and I had a maybe it was a schoolhouse because it had a bell. And for a month in the early seventies. When I would ring that bell, it would change the channel on the TV. And it would drive my parents crazy because I couldn't resist doing it. It was like this magic. I don't know if it was like solar flares or sunspot activity. <laughs> Something about the frequency of the bell. Yeah, I got a bad case of sunspots today. Because we had a remote that worked on some <laughs> kind of vibrational <laughs> thing. And it's when I would ring that bell, episode. it would change the thing. And then it went away. It was like a month it worked. <laughs> That's so bizarre. bizarre. It's that's true. that's like when we uh, I used to play Space Invaders at our local bowling alley, and at one point something got messed up with the Space Invaders machine, where if you pushed the coin return, you'd get free games. Mm. So we wound up wow. playing a lot of free Space Invaders for a while because uh, you. you just kept pushing the uh, <laughs> push the coin return and you get free games. You know there used to be this glitch in uh, what was it Donkey Kong where if you stood on like one of the lower levels and jumped off backwards, you would automatically advance to like the next level. You could like skip over things to, to do that. It was interesting Ooh, at the time. Goes. Yeah, exactly. But you died a lot before you finally figured out how to do it. I found that out, that out the hard way as well. Anyway, but sitcoms are on trial. So like there are sitcoms that are now on that would definitely not fly back then. Oh, like well, Modern Grace. Family. For example, or just Will and Grace, any gay thing, yeah, obviously wouldn't fly even in film. Even what was like movie. the first sitcom? I think there was that sitcom with uh, Tony Randall where he played a gay guy. He was that was probably like the first um, yeah. sitcom with a gay character. In I don't it, I think, think it was overt though. I think it was implied, but they never showed him with a boyfriend or said he was gay. Wasn't that the case? With I that think show? it's yeah. I can't remember. It was like Dear something or other. I can't but remember that might be after it. Soap. I think Soap was the first one. I think it was. I think, yeah, because Billy Crystal played the gay character in Soap. Mm -hmm. 
That was and a great show. Oh my god. That was like a, a mental mess. <laughs> that was the one was show so my liberal good. parents didn't want us to watch. I They're prefer the to. more slapstick uh, comedies to the sitcoms, I think. Mm. You know, because soap was basically yeah. more parodying soap operas. Right. You know, it was yeah. just being ridiculous. You know, it's kind of like there was some some other show that was kind of similar that uh, what was it called Quark? You guys remember the show Quark? Yeah, the science fiction show with Richard Benjamin. Yeah, it was like parodying yeah. like uh, Battlestar Galactica. It was basically yeah. like a a space garbage truck going through outer space. Yeah, and terrible so, show. Yeah, it wasn't really good. <laughs> but, uh, I like the premise. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, unfortunately, the technology wasn't. They didn't give a lot of money to the budget for that show. Um, but but anyway, you know, I think those are the shows that I kind of preferred because they were just out and out funny as opposed to trying yeah. to make a situation funny because people are too stupid to talk to each other. Yeah. You know, they tried to make it some way, somewhat real, but it wasn't really real because of the stupidity. Give me yeah. an example of the difference between what you're talking about. Well, so if you look at Happy Days, right? So it's just basically yeah. kids going to school and they hang out at the local, you know, McDonald's type shop. And then uh, weird things kind of happen to them or sure. basic problems. It's just a situation they want to be in. It's not really a, a slapstick show. Like, a, right? but I guess, what, what slapstick show are you referring to? Oh, it was the one we were just talking about, uh, besides the, the Quark one. I've lost my memory already. Soap? Soap, yeah. That was a little more slapstick. It had more uh, issues that were just designed to be parody as opposed to being real people in a situation that becomes funny. Right. You know, they so weren't. They weren't put together as like real people, like sitcoms are supposed to be real people. If that I makes think sense. what also illustrates this is, is that? I Love oh. Lucy where I Love Lucy, so many of the antics she got into is just because she was afraid to ask Ricky something. Like, yeah. oh, Ricky's bringing home the big boss. And instead of just asking him, because I'm scared, she gets into all these shenanigans, doing whatever she thinks she has to do. It's yeah, or, she, or, she, or she's lying to him, or he's lying to her about yeah. something. Or they could yeah. just come clean, and the whole thing would be fixed. Exactly. Like whenever she was doing the uh, the candy belt one, where the the candy just kept coming and coming and coming. You know, yeah. the way in real life, you would have just stopped the machine and talked to the yeah. supervisor and said, hey, maybe we should slow down the machine because I'm unable to actually put these yeah. things in the boxes because it's going too fast. But instead, you know, and this is a, an example of a successful uh, situation that is actually funny at the time. You know, it was her shoving chocolates in her shirt and in her mouth and wherever else she could put them to try and keep up, which is what made it funnier because that's a little more slapstick way to handle the situation. But it was Whatever still she was not them, a slapstick show, something? though. Yeah, like her ears or in, you know, wherever else. Yeah. And her, orifice, and, and nostrils, else. Sure, in her nostrils, Greg. <laughs> she, she wore them like big black eyeballs. I, what are you talking about? Anyway, if you want to infer something, just go ahead and state it. Don't infer it, Greg. I like to keep this show clean. Right. Um, yes, you you constantly do. I don't want to go blue. <laughs> right. You did that in the first five minutes. <laughs> you're talking about Fonzie. Right. You know, so can we talk about the first show? Handling that probably, <laughs> the first show that never should have even come out was uh, we were talking about this the other day. Is Hogan's Heroes? That was like the the weirdest idea. Where even when it came out, people were like, "We can't do this. We can't have a comedy a sitcom set in a German war camp." Not a concentration camp necessarily, but a prisoner of war camp. Yeah. Not a lot of good things happened in those. It wasn't very funny. So you're well, suggesting but, it, but it was based off of a movie, right, which had humor in the movie. That movie so, was much darker than the show. Though. It was it darker, easier. but there was some humorous aspects to it, is my point. Yeah. And so that's how I think they were able to make the concept into yeah. a comedy. But yeah, it's kind of a, a ridiculous thing. But, you know, weren't, weren't there comedies made in prisons and i was was there a sitcom that took place in a prison i don't know i'm thinking of something prison uh, sitcom no, the no. Only pr i can't no. think of one okay that would be it. funny though well it's, it's kind of like they made a sitcom about doctors in the korean war you know yeah. with mash that, that was, was a dramedy almost it was a dramedy i wouldn't say that's a, a sitcom as much as i mean there was obviously it was a funny show but it oh, was definitely a, a sitcom it was definitely a sitcom. Yes. 
Yeah, absolutely. But it had it lots of drama in it. So it had yeah. some Pats. drama, but it was kind of like they were those special episodes, you know? I mean, you had the nearly every character is like a parody of a real person, you yeah. know, of the main characters, that yeah. is. You know, Jamie Farr was not there for dramatic reasons. He was dressed up like a woman for a reason. No, but I'm saying a lot of the themes you keep referring to, there's a situation yeah. that if they just ask questions, they'd get out of it. And I don't think MASH follows that formula of, like, Seinfeld, where if somebody would have just asked the question of the guy, they wouldn't have had these hijinks that ensued. There was, there was an underlying story, the, the soldier who came in who had the problem, and then there was the hijinks between, you know, the, the, the alcoholics and the you know, the other guy and whatever. <laughs> I think that should be the, the show. <laughs> the alcoholics and the other guy. I think that yeah, should be its own sitcom. What is his name? Frank, Frank Burns. And I think it's kind of like what this podcast is. It's the alcoholics and the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think it's just the alcoholic oh. and the guy who drinks a little and then the sober guy. <laughs> I thought I'm an he, alcoholic. I, 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 make, I am making a racist point of view regarding <laughs> Irish people is what I'm doing, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I don't think yeah. Brendan's actually an alcoholic. I, I think this is coming he's back to, you know, you're, you're Italian, I'm Irish, and he's just lily white Protestant. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right. really what, that's what that comes down to. I'm a wasj. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I am. A white Anglo-Saxon Jew. And a navy brat on top of it. Yeah, that's true. It's a, I, I am such a weird mix of cultures. It's uh, but but I think but I think I could be easily uh, pigeonholed in terms of European because I don't think there's any like sub-Saharan um, ethnicity within me, which I'd be totally fine with, you know. But no, my uh, my mother's my mother's side of the isn't it. Isn't that mighty white of me, Greg? <laughs> my mother's side of the family is like I'm third generation American, and my dad's side we go back to like the Civil War. That's kind of uh, like there are these brothers yeah. from Switzerland who migrated to Tennessee or something, and uh, uh, that's where my parents' family, my dad's family, came from. My mother's family, I think her parents, her her great grandparents, I think came from Ukraine and wound up migrating to England. And then her grandparents came from England to the United States. And, and ladies and gentlemen, if you had a Roku, you could watch the History Channel. Tune in next time when Matt tells us more boring <laughs> stories about his past family. God, I wish I had a Roku. I wish I could tell you <laughs> stories about my future family, but I don't know them yet, Brendan. So I have to only use the ones from the past. Oh, oh. Wordplay is such cheap humor. <laughs> That's all I've got. I've basically got a nickel for every joke. I have to pay myself to tell them. Because mm. <laughs> no one else is giving me any money. What was the first What was the first uh, sitcom, since we're very much on that, that you guys remember going, ah, oh, I love this show? Huh. I mean, I watched Happy Days. I don't know if I loved the show. I mean, I was entertained by the show. Sure. I didn't hate the show like you did. Um, well, I'm probably, probably all in the family, honestly. Really? I think I, I think as a was, kid. Yeah, because we watched that, and we watched Sanford and Son, and we watched Good Times, and we watched Jeffersons. You know, and they're all. I think, but I think it was because Carol O'Connor, the guy who played Archie Bunker, was such a good actor. Yeah. I think that's what really made that show. You know, plus uh, was it Gene Stable that I think was played the wife. Yeah, he yep. was also a really good actor. I think they just had really good cast in that show. Oh yeah, and I think that's what made it really work. Um, is like they kind of Im they seem like real people, but the stuff. I don't know. I think I was an easy laugh back then too, because he would just go eat it or or meathead, and I would just I think laugh at that. I think yeah. that was my sense of humor back then. That's what made things funny to me. I was listening um, to an interview with Norman Lear, the creator, and he said to this day he's still a little sad that. He created Archie Bunker as this like bigoted, sh basically shithead, and America embraced him because Carol O'Connor was such a good actor. Like you could sympathize with Archie in a weird way. Like he was like, yeah, this guy's a product of his environment, and even though he's a total shit heel, he's always insulting people. But America really liked Archie Bunker. He was the Fonzie of that show, if you will. I and think he, he um, for me. He was he, he made me see like a microcosm of our society 
that I wouldn't necessarily be dealing with, but it gave me an understanding of what other people would go through. In other words, what really kind of made that show was how people reacted to his bigotry, you know, and how they dealt with it. And they dealt with it a very direct way, generally. They would uh, address it head on, you know, and it was good to have the guy who was the black bigot on the show, which was Jefferson, because yeah. he way to hated white people as much as Bunker hated black people, right? And they would mm-hmm. kind of go head to head, and yet you could see that they, they it was explained that they were neighbors and they they could actually get along, kind of. And there was like this begrudging respect that they had for each other, because yeah. I think they both respected each other's hate, is what I think yeah. <laughs> made that made that work, but. At the same time, you know, you had like the liberal son-in-law and liberal daughter who would also attack him for his, his points of view. And I think that was actually, um, I think, a very turning point for me growing up is that gave me these alternative points of view to how some people view things. I mean, I was fortunate. I didn't have bigotry in my home. You know, my dad could have been. My grandmother on my dad's side absolutely was a racist like as racist as they come, which I didn't know until much later in life. I didn't know until I was in college that she was like that. And so it, it was like my dad was never was like she? that. She was so racist <laughs> that she was thumbs up for lynching. So, really? Oh, yeah. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Well, she would – your grandmother. So, God, yeah. she would have been, what, born in the – Early 1900s, yeah. Early 1900s, yeah. yeah. So, okay. I'd say at, at her – I think at the latest she would have been born in like 1920, maybe, but I'm pretty sure she was born much before then, because my dad, of, my dad was born in 38. So, so what she, part of the country? Oh, this is like the hills of Tennessee. Oh, that well, that was yeah. lynching time for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, when I visited her in college, um, and there we were listening to the radio, and uh, Jesse Jackson was like giving a speech or something. She's like, you know, we didn't see any of them around here anymore since they you know strung up the last one outside of town all those years ago oh man and my jaw kind of dropped and i'm like oh my god i'm like i had no idea i was related to that <laughs> was you she know, at and, the first and, and that's the weird thing about it. it's like so my my mother's definitely full-blown jew right and so jewish american princess all the way and um my that's who my dad married and so I can only imagine what it would have been like at the wedding. All I know is that I heard for years one grandmother talking smack about the other grandmother. <laughs> they would both do it about each other. And I'm wow. like, you know, but I later kind of found out that my mother's mother was a little bit racist too. So there is a term for black people in the Yiddish called Shvatsa, um, which basically just means black, right? But it's used in kind of a derogatory tone when they use it and i didn't know this till college also about my grandparents on my mother's side i'm like well they could have had something they could have bonded over (laughs) like like archie bunker and george jefferson which doesn't make any sense to me because you know jews are so persecuted by those same people that they shouldn't be persecuting anybody of any oh, ethnicity. that's so naive, Matt. It's, mm. it's not a naive My Italian thing, Greg. Relatives Greg are it's not a naive racist. thing. It's a desire. It is. It's yes, not you're naivete. Right. It's, I understand. How, I know how the world works, Greg. I, I yeah. do a podcast with you. I know how it works. <laughs> you know, drugs. You, you know how the world works because you do a podcast with Greg. Yes, <laughs> I know about I've, people I've like him. him. I've enlightened <laughs> Matt over the months. Wow. My Amazing. Italian relatives were the most racist people. Oh, my God. They were the most blatant racist. They would say things like, oh, they come over here and take our jobs. And it's like, your father came over here and took some jobs from Italy. They were saying that about him. Yeah, isn't when, that what uh, Gangs of New York was all about? Um, it's like uh, there was the, the Americans who were, like, taking out, the, like, the Irish gangs and yeah. anybody else that uh, much, yeah. weren't born here. Yeah, yeah not, not Americans, yeah. non-born Americans. The nativists. Right. right. Yeah. I forget what their, their, the gang was called in that movie. But anyway. Um, the Dead Rabbits. Dead Rabbits was the Irish gang, I think. Yeah. No, they were called the Sweat Hogs. They were the Sweat Hogs. <laughs> it went from de- Dead Rabbits to Sweat Hogs. They like went up they in were the world. Mi- 
They were Mickey McLucky charms. That's what they were. <laughs> so the sweat hogs were definitely a mix of ethnicities, though, because you had an Italian, you had an African American, you had a Hispanic and Italian, guy, and, and then a guy, who, then you had uh, the guy who was Polish. No, I yeah. don't think there was that many Italians. It was like was Horshack Jewish? He's I was Polish. I don't know if That's he was Polish. Jewish. No, Kaplan yeah. was Jewish. Cotter was Jewish. Yeah, Cotter's Jews. Yeah. There was the black guy, and then two Italians. I don't even wasn't remember it? who the other two Italians were besides no, there, wasn't there there was Epstein? Arborino. That's not, that's Epstein not a, was Epstein. very Hispanic. Ep, 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 Epstein was half Jew, half Hispanic. You're right. He was Hispanic. I was just remembering Epstein. names. I was just, there was one guy I remember, and I kind of dubbed in he was Italian, but now Maybe I remember this. It was Epstein. Oh, so Ep, Epstein. Not an Italian name, no. Yeah, Epstein, I think, is his name. By the way, this Italian is Italian and side. Jewish. Did you guys have a crush on his wife? She was so hot. That smarty pants wife of his with her oh, glasses. She, well, I remember she was cute. Oh, I love she. Her. She kind of reminded me of um, she was sexy. Bailey Quarters and WKRP and Cincinnati. Yes, very much. Good call. Yeah, mm, like the girl you actually want to date, not just. And no, now let's let's talk about WKRP and Cincinnati for a second. So that was a good one. There was one very very controversial episode in that particular show, just when they dropped the turkeys out of the helicopter. Was that controversial? I just thought it was funny. <laughs> well, it was, it was controversial, controversial for people in PETA. In Cincinnati. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. talking about in people for the ethical treatment of animals was, were like, this is something that would not fly now because you could not torture turkeys in that way. You know, but they really funny. didn't yeah. drop turkeys out of a... I mean, they could have. They didn't do it. <laughs> they could have done it. It's just the whole concept. You know, I want to give but anybody. They were making light of it, Brendan. They were making light of this turkey yes. genocide. They don't want to give anybody ideas. Yes, yeah. turkey but genocide. He, might do it. he thought they could fly. I swear to God, he thought they could. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that was like bigoted towards guys who wore plaid. That particular show, because there right. was a guy <laughs> who wore plaid all the time. You know, Frank? the biggest, the biggest What's jerk. I think it was Herb. Herb, yes. Herb, Herb Tarlick. Guy. Herb, Herb Tarlick, Tarlick, that was guy. the name, yes. And he was a sexist fuck. He was a complete rep reprobate shit male. Yeah, right. And then, of course, and then they had uh, Lonnie Anderson as the sex pot uh, secretary. Yeah, do you think her blonde bimbo character would fly today? Do you think people would be like, hey, come on. She's a blonde bimbo. This is yeah. like, do, they, do they no longer have blonde bimbo characters on shows? I don't know. I, I don't watch. One. Not the bucks. They don't have the buxom ones anymore. I don't think. Certainly not some blonde and you know yeah buxom blonde going around being acting stupid and everybody leering at her and she doesn't get it. I think they that save that for movies. Fly. They keep that in the movies. They don't put it on TV. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they put it on TV. So so Greg, what was your TV show? Was it Happy Days? No, I God every show. I was. <laughs> I, I didn't. He really loved them all. Too, either. You I swear pick to God, one. like. I don't remember really liking them. I was a complete idiot. I, I was completely addicted. I, I watched the Brady Bunch every day. Never laughed at it. I don't know why I kept watching it. I watched Happy News. <laughs> oh, I can tell you why. Marsha. That's why you watched it. <laughs> yeah, she was pretty cute. Ah. But it was, there was cuter. Like, I, I liked other women on other sitcoms more if I was just going to watch for that reason. If you know what I'm saying, I think you watch reason. Brady Bunch because it's more relatable to you as a child because there's I a guess, lot of children but, on that show. But I'd watch them three times. By the time I graduated high school, I'd probably seen every episode three or four times, and they were terrible the first time. I watched <laughs> everything. I can't. I think the first sitcom with maybe some critical faculties in my head that I was like, "This is actually pretty good." It might be Soap, where I was like, "I mean." We're doing sitcoms, right? So Saturday Night Live really blew me when SCTV when I was a kid. But right. sitcoms, I think Soap was the first time I was like, this isn't just insipid, stupid shit. Even though it might have been a little stupid. I haven't seen it since. But it seemed a little smarter or like more satirical. And I don't it definitely know. Definitely was smarter. I kind of stayed yeah. away from it just because it had to do with soap operas. And I didn't really want to be associated with soap operas in my mind. You know, so really? I knew of the characters, and I knew I later on in life I went and watched a couple of the episodes, and, and actually, you know, later on in life I found it just a little boring, actually, because they're like soap operas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think, think that show yeah. that show would be not that fly well today because Billy Crystal's character, even though it was the first gay character in sitcoms, he is shown as the most mincing stereotype of a gay man. You know, like he is. He's got that voice. He's got. He's so mincing and 
like, oh, Mary, you know, he's kind of that, you know. I wonder if today gay people well, would be like, I hey, think come Billy on. Crystal is a walking racist stereotype of voices. <laughs> Because he, he used to do a great black man voice. He used to. Do well, he used to well, I mean, guy. he used to do blackface for crying out loud. He used to oh. wear blackface to be Sammy Davis Jr. And then there was that whole skit that he did on Saturday Night Live with Christopher Guest, where they played these two. Blackface. I forgot. They did these. They, they're these two blackface baseball players that were retired. You know that they did for Saturday Night Live. They totally did blackface back in the day. You know, and it was yeah. accepted. And this was yeah. in the 80s. You know? yeah. Blackface was yeah. except in the 80s. And now it's definitely a good way to like lose a political career. Although... Or an acting career. Well, you know, the uh, my light suddenly decided to get really yeah. bright for some reason. Right. <laughs> I, and now Matt is illuminated. Now. And now I have received an epiphany from God. <laughs> 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 I don't know yeah, why that, ha that happens every once in a while. It just decides to go bright on me. I don't know why. God is telling you, why are you wasting your time doing this podcast, Matt? <laughs> feed the poor. What I are you doing with I your time? Uh, the poor can feed themselves if people give them food. But um, anyway, <laughs> getting back to I can't even remember what I was talking about. I got so distracted by getting We're blinded. We're talking about Billy Crystal and Blackface. Oh, yeah, and doing Blackface. So uh, what was it? The... Um, current prime minister or president of Canada. Justin Trudeau. Yeah, did uh, blackface in college. Yeah. And then there was the governor of uh, Virginia. Virginia. Mm -hmm. Who was found yeah. to have done it too. And neither one of them resigned. So I guess it's not a full um, shot in the head for doing blackface. Yeah. But I think anybody after that um, who's closer to this current generation would probably be shooting themselves in the foot politically if they did blackface yeah. at some point. Uh, did you guys yeah, ever do blackface at that time? <laughs> I did. Did you? You one time like well, just we, put uh, shoe polish but, all over your face? But it was, I was a kid. It was, uh, I want to say it was the mid, no, early 80s. And for Halloween, they had these inflatable, uh, you know, you had the smock like we all had. But then they had these heads that you put on the top of your head and you blew them up. And mine was a bat. It was a blow up bat I had on my head, and so I painted my face black. I was gonna say you didn't do blackface, you did bat face. It was bat face, but you know, no, if no, somebody no, took no, a picture no, 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 of bat me. face. Where's black face? It's black bat face. Yeah, black bat. That's face. the worst. Because you're pissing <laughs> off a whole other species as yes. well as pissing off black people, as well I'm as just cave dwellers. I'm an insensitive prick. That's what I you am. Are. To bats, blacks, and cave dwellers. I gotta say, this might be controversial, oh. but in 1980, if you were saying, hey, I'm going for Halloween, I'm going to be Michael Jackson, I don't think it means you have hate in your heart, because I want to make it authentic. I'm going to make myself look like, oh, I'm sorry, Michael Jackson is a bad example, because he was getting white then. A, 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 say, black, a real black person. A real you, black know. person. And I, and I, I'm going to go as Denzel that. Washington. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go for Halloween. I'm going as Denzel Washington. And I know that, yes, there's this. You're making you know a your horrible history, example here, Greg. I don't know where you're going if, with this. If you know your history, there is this like strain of cultural ins insensitivity about blackface. Sure. Shows. You don't have to know your but, history. You can just read the news in the last 10 years. I know, but back then when it was okay, it wasn't like everyone in the party was going to be like, how dare you? It's just like, hey, I'm just doing an authentic costume. Sorry, it doesn't mean I'm not really. And I hate black no, I mean I think you know ever since the days of Al Jolson, um, things later became you know it is kind of an insensitive thing to do, you know because it does harken back to the minstrel shows. It's it's insensitive or it's just the person's stupid because they didn't know any better. And that I think would be the two reasons to do blackface, or the third reason, yeah. which is you just don't care. Um, yeah, you're not insensitive. I'm just you're saying, just I doubt that person is this, like virulent, virulent racist just because he was like, "I'm going to do a really authentic Halloween costume. I'm going to look just like Sam Cooke or someone." So he's going to go all out. You're picking up all these like Fuck people you. who are nobody actually dresses up like Greg. <laughs> I know. I, I don't know why he, I can't think of a better Mr. T. Let's Everyone goes Mr. around dressing up like Sam Cooke. Would Mr. T, Mr. T might have been a good Halloween costume in 1982? Okay, that would be a little more. 
I think fun, fun carry is. something for Halloween that would make more sense. Yeah, Mr. T. Because I remember Mr. T and Mr. and Mrs. T Bloody Mary mix from Saturday Night Live um, when Eddie Murphy was on. And uh, it was Mr. T and a woman who dressed like Mr. T but didn't have blackface, but she had a mohawk and chains. And they both were yelling at the camera together. Like, you have to buy this Bloody Mary mix. I, was on Saturday Night Live. I never saw that one. It was, it was the uh, non Lorne Michaels era of Saturday Night Live. It's the era when... Um, Eddie Murphy and Joe Piscopo were the two big names yeah. of uh, Saturday I was Night watching Live. all those. So it was, uh, what was her name? Robin Duke was the name of the act. The, I liked Robin Duke. She's actress. from SCTV. She's, She's from from SCTV. everything? She's an SCTV person. Second oh, City, kind of I didn't know she was from that particular yeah. genre. Yeah. All right, so, so shows, we've done a more, fully oh. thorough um, uh, investigation into That's sitcom. wrapping this up in case you weren't paying attention, Craig. <laughs> Time to wrap this up. We beat yeah. this blackface thing to death. I don't know where that even came from. Uh, wait, call- it came from the minstrel was- shows, Brandon. Right, which is a sitcom, right? Yeah, yeah. The minstrel really? show is like airing on NBC next year. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to fly really well. There's actually a movie about that it's called Bamboozled by Spike Lee. He made a movie about this. uh, Yes, he did, but that's not what I'm talking about. Where mystery comes back. That's right. It's like, if you want to make a real good sitcom right now, take that era of uh, of our history and turn that into a comedy. See how good of a writer you are there. What about a sitcom about a KKK group who are just zany, a zany bunch of nutballs? You know, I just got through watching this movie... um, about this guy, uh, John Callahan, who's a cartoonist for the Willamette Week. I love that guy. And it was uh, with Joaquin Phoenix and uh, Jonah Hill. And this came out like two years ago. It was Gus Van Zandt movie. And um, he had this cartoon that he did where it was like two KKK members walking down the street and they were talking to each other. And one of them said, I always love that feeling when the sheets come right out of the dryer. <laughs> Good one. So you kind of reminded me of that, Greg, with your your statement, like in terms of making that into a sitcom, right? But it would be like more wacky hijinks between the two KKK members. Yeah. But that sounds like something out of like Kentucky Fried Movie. It you know, does. They would do something like that, or, or there yeah. was like a sequel to Kentucky Fried Movie. What, one of the KKK guys is actually black. That's Ooh. a different movie. That's, that's called black. Me. That's called Black Clans. Black Clans. Oh, I haven't seen it. Oh. Oh, you should watch that one. You might find that one fascinating. It's based on a oh, true story. Cool. Yeah, based but it's not a, a sitcom. It's a drama, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely based not a, a true story. Definitely not a comedy. Say, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, based on a true story, it's not a funny movie. <laughs> I'm saying there probably it's are funny. some funny moments to it, I would think, though. I, I say it's funny because the black Klansman doesn't actually know he's black. But his oh, white that's Klansman, the Dave Chappelle thing. That's, That's right. Chappelle. Yeah. Do the whole show like that. <laughs> Chappelle would go for it. There was some. Oh, well, right. Chappelle recently did um, the speech or the monologue on Saturday Night Live, like mm-hmm. right after the election. He was dropping the N word all over the place on Saturday Night Live. Oh yeah, he was smoking a cigarette on the stage. He was. He had a what? He had an <laughs> ashtray right next to him. <laughs> He was definitely smoking. Oh, yeah. He was cracking up. I'm like, oh, yeah, just do it. Take those fines. <laughs> he I guess there probably wasn't much of an audience there as so much. You know, like the, the band was like separated by plexiglass in some cases. So mm-hmm. obviously they're trying to COVID up the Saturday Night Live uh, audience area. Anyway, so I think we should uh, wrap up the, uh, the, the sitcoms on trial. So who won or who lost? Did the American public lose because of some of these oh, horrible sitcoms? Yeah. I, I wasted so many hours of my childhood watching insipid shit. Would you say the, the television really is the boob tube and that it was has no real value for humanity because well, of sitcoms? Well, boobs are good. I like boobs. Yeah, but it turns it people into boobs. Boob. It turned people into boobs. It was an elbow tube. It was <laughs> elbow too. like watching an elbow. It was just insipid nonsense. I think sitcoms are way better now. Like all the sitcoms you mentioned that are popular now, they're much more clever than anything we got to watch as kids. Except for Sanford and Son was just great because Red Fox is fucking hilarious. But really, the script writing wasn't 
you know, stellar. It was, but everything's gotten better, I think, in TV. But yeah, I just grew up watching so much shit. And I think I want to put them in the electric chair with sitcoms. I think what's changed with sitcoms now is essentially language and sexuality are no longer the um, pariah aspects. And taboo. All, of a show right they're no longer taboo they're the things that are more acceptable but if you're dealing with mm-hmm. like racism or sexism those are less acceptable so it's kind of flipped in that regard whereas before sexism racism used to be more acceptable but if you talked about sex and if you talked about um and like using bad language you couldn't use that on tv so those have definitely changed so what that's like an racist interest- sex like sex help, sex done just for racist purposes. I think that was the movie Monsters Ball. Oh, was that that one? Okay. Yeah, I think that was the one with racist sex. That was what uh, Halle Berry and uh, Billy Bob, Billy Bob Thornton. Thornton. Right. Yes. Oh, uh, he has he has all kinds of hate sex. That guy. <laughs> I think so. That's all he's ever had. Yeah. He's never had <laughs> loving sex. No. All right. Well, I, on that note, so uh, the American public lost as well as the rest of the world because we all got sucked into a really bad comedy and we were made to pretend that it was actually funny. And we didn't really learn anything except fake social interactions that aren't real. And uh, that's why we're all doing math today. So on that note, Brendan, would you like to uh, close things out with some type of uh, pithy or profound commentary about greg's facial hair or something else i have a soul I, patch i think greg needs to dye it <laughs> i think greg needs to dye his soul patch jet black <laughs>